back to the KJ Methods YouTube channel. What I decided to talk about today is the real estate math. There's so much misinformation out there in terms of whether you need the math or you don't need the math. So what do you guys think? The math is about 10% of any real estate exam. I think the math is necessary. Now, can you pass without the math? Absolutely, you can. The problem is, when I see students who don't know the math at all, it kind of drags down their score, and if they're not really very, very good on the content, then they have difficulty. So what do I say instead? I say, you try to learn as much of the math as you can. After you have done that, if you get to the end and you're like, I just, I'm terrible at math, which actually none of you guys are terrible at math. Some of you are going to be able to learn all of the math and some of you are gonna just have to say at the end, all right, you know what? I can do five or six math problems. I can pick those out and I'm really good at those. That's what I want you to do at the end of the day. But I don't want you to give up on the math because in actuality, the math is done in a pretty methodical kind of fashion. And if you know how to do it that way, you're going to be able to do some of the math problems. So in the KJ method, I believe we are one of the only prep courses that has a standalone math section. That's right. I have recorded 25 math videos that go along with your regular content. In each of the math modules, I teach you a math problem, and then we do math examples right after that. I believe if you do it that way, then at the end of the day, you may be able to pick out five or six of the math problems that you're able to do. A lot of times with the math, what I see more than anything is that students are just uncomfortable with math. They've told themselves they cannot do math at all. And so then they psych themselves out as to being able to do the math. But it is really not that difficult once you learn the process. What I'm going to do in this video is insert one of the math modules from the KJ method. And so right when I get finished here, I'll insert that. You'll be able to look at one of the modules and then decide for yourself. I start very basic and then move students through by teaching them the T method. If you don't know the T method, you need to learn it. And then we go over math problems after that. Well, that's it for today. Once again, Make sure you watch the math video that I'm going to put right after this. Make sure that you subscribe to the YouTube channel so that you can get updated every time we add a new video. Well, that's it for today. Happy studying, guys. And thank you for coming to the KJ Methods YouTube channel. Have a great day. Okay, in this first topic, we're going to go way back. Two, when you learn fractions, decimals, and percentages. I find that many students are weak in these areas when they come to the real estate class and it makes it more difficult for them to understand some of these numbers and how they convert back and forth. Understand that these numbers are simply different expressions of the same thing. It's just like someone saying, hey, I got a dollar. Somebody else says, well, I got four quarters. Somebody else says, well, I got 10 dimes, right? And so it's the same thing. We're just expressing it in a different manner. But you do kind of need to understand what the difference is between a fraction, decimal, and percentage to master the real estate concepts. Now, when we're talking about any of these three things, fractions, decimals, or percentage, we're just talking about a part of a whole. So we're expressing it as a part of the whole thing. Let's take a look. So a fraction is simply a part of a whole. A percentage is a part of a whole, but it's based upon 100%. And a decimal is simply a part of a whole also, 
but it's based upon one. So let's take a look. If we have a pizza pie and there are two slices to that pizza, when we try to do a fraction, what we're saying is the bottom of the fraction is the entire pizza, how many pieces there potentially are. And look here, you can see there are potentially two slices of pizza. The top number is going to be whether there's something missing or whether it's present. Let's say I say to you, how many pieces are missing? You would say, hey, KJ, there's one piece out of the two pieces that are missing. And so we say it is one half. Well, then how do we convert that one half over to a percentage? Well, a percentage is based upon 100%. So that means the whole is going to be 100 on the bottom. And then half of 100 would be 50. Okay, so I think you guys know how to do that. But when we're looking at percentages, how do we then convert that to a percentage? Well, all we do is take the top of the fraction and put a percentage behind it. Yep, that's it. So 50 over 100 is the same as 50%. Well, how do we then convert that percentage over to a decimal? Now, I notice that a lot of students do not know their place values, so they don't know how to simply convert it from a percentage to a decimal in terms of just move it over, right? Move it to the left, move it to the right. Many students do not know how to do that. And so how do you go from a percentage to a decimal pretty easily? Well, just take it, take that same 50 and put the period in front of the 50 and now drop the percentage. What did we do? We said it is 0.50 of 1. What does that mean? Let's make sure we understand. It means it's not quite one yet, because if you remember from school, one or two or three, those whole numbers have a period after those numbers, but a decimal has a period before the number. That means it's not quite one yet. So we're not at one. So 0.25, we're not at one. 0.50, we're not at one yet, okay? Let's see if you can do it. The first one, let's go from the one quarter, that means one out of four parts, to a percentage. Well, we would go over and put the 100 on the bottom because you know now percentages are based on 100. Well, what is one out of four? right? That would be a quarter of it. So 25 over 100. Now, how do we get the percentage? Just take the 25 and put a percentage after it. Easily, we can get from that to a decimal by just putting 25 and putting that point in front of it. How do we go from a decimal back to a percentage? Well, we're going the reverse way now. We just go back and we say that that is 60%. If we were over 100, it is 60 over 100. All right, let's move that over to a fraction. That would be the same as six pieces out of 10 pieces. Now, look at this. This is funky, right? Equals three fifths. How did I get three fifths from six tenths? Well, if you remember, we used to have that thing called least common denominator, right? We said, if you find one number that goes into both, then we can reduce it down to a smaller number. And so I would say two, two goes into six, two goes into 10. How many times does it go into six? Three times. How many times does it go into 10? five times. And so it is now reduced all the way down. We can't reduce it any further to three fifths. 
Next one, we're at percentages of 90%. Let's move over to decimals. You know that that would be 0.9. How do we move it back over to the other side? That would be 9 over 10. 9 over 10. All right? So hopefully that is a quick explanation and it'll get you started working towards our next modules. Now that you've had an opportunity to watch that math video, what did you think? Not too difficult, right? But very often we have to start back from the very beginning. So that's why percentages, decimals, fractions, a lot of you guys forgot about that. And then we move through each of the modules after that. So as I stated, I was just giving you an example of what we have. Now in the KJ method, if you don't want to do the whole program, you can just buy the math as a separate standalone section. I don't recommend it. I recommend doing it all together, but certainly it is there for you. Once again, what does it avoid? You don't have to go all through the internet finding out how do you do this problem? How do you do that problem? All of the problems are there for you in one cohesive, standalone math prep. Well, that's it for today. Once again, thank you for coming to the KJ Methods YouTube channel. And don't forget to hit subscribe so that you can be updated when we upload new videos. Have a great day, guys.